Uh, I'd like to invite Air Marshal uh, Denny to get us started with his views on embedding innovation and agility within the capability life cycle. Sir, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, Air Vice Marshal Rob Denny, and I've got the joy of talking about innovation and the CLC. What is the CLC? Well, the CLC is the capability life cycle, which uh, fell out of the first principles review back in 2015. Um, and according to the manual, the capability life cycle provides defence with an end-to-end -end process for capability development and delivery of capital projects and associated through life support related to a major capital equipment, infrastructure, enterprise enablers and information and communications technology. It sounds like something full of innovation and agility. Um, it's an interesting process that is how defence acquires and manages capabilities. And in reality, there's two capability life cycles. There's the capability life cycle that you can download on the internet and look up and read, and it is a long PDF document. And then there's the capability life cycle that is executed and practiced. And that's the behaviored, behaved capability life cycle, how it's executed by those people involved in it. It's, uh, it's an interesting and challenging place to work within. Um, and initially, uh, when we were getting here, I, you know, the, the staff were digging out some slides and they gave me a quote from uh, Steve Jobs uh, about innovation. But the reality is, is that he used to work in a, as CEO and chair of a corporate entity, which is a little bit different to being in the largest government department in, uh, in defense. So then we dug out this, uh, this quote. This is a really uh, powerful quote from my perspective, because at the end of the day, in, in my words, brilliant ideas and technologies are good, but bringing good ideas to actually become a reality is brilliant. Because too often we have great ideas and we don't have the means to turn it into reality. And that often becomes the you know, issue of, of our innovation. So what is innovation? Um, you know, lots of definitions out there. Uh, the Defence Capability Manual talks about a process, uh, et cetera. But the interesting challenge is uh, centrally managed and controlled innovation. You know, is it the great oxymoron? Can you innovate in a large government department that centrally controls and directs innovation and you get posted into innovation and you're now posted out of innovating? Uh, you know, is that something we can actually achieve? Or uh, is it something more of a cultural and behavioural activity that we need to get at? My contention is it's the latter. We can have innovation hubs and cells, but ultimately it comes down to how do we enable it. And, uh, and from our perspective, there's, there's three ways you can get innovation. The first one is about permission. People need to have permission to innovate. They need to believe that they can go ahead and shake things up and get it a different manner of going about it. You know, senior leadership buy-in is critical, and commanders at every level need to get after that. The reality is innovation brings risk. It brings potential downside, it brings uh, risk of you know, time, money, all being lost. And people need to realise that taking that risk is a good thing. It's the way we actually get improvement, it's the way we enhance our capabilities. And having that permission is, is critical. You need money. You need funding, you need assured funding. You need to know that there will be dollars there when you only need to reach into the cupboard and, and dig out for that. Yeah. Within Defence, we have um, you know, a number of mechanisms, capability development investment funding, which is you know, money that we allocate to doing uh, pre-gate approvals, pre-gate zero. But the reality is um, where innovation can really pay dividends is upfront and where the funds are available is not necessarily in the same location. So the challenge is committing those funds where you can most realise the benefit, and how do we do that? You know, we can fill up the corners with Air Force Miners projects and manage in-service things with Air Force Miners, but that's only the small adaptations that we'll get at. The real, uh, the real benefits come up early on. But the main issue is culture. A supportive culture for people to innovate, continue to innovate, even when it doesn't work. 
Yeah. Defense is a very results orientated culture and behavior. And the science, if you look in the sporting analogies, uh, that results orientated cultures don't necessarily inspire the right behaviors. If you look at a professional sports athlete, they don't necessarily measure themselves on results and outcomes. They actually try and assess themselves on, you know, did I have good decision making? Was I having a clear mind when I was trying to do the right things and positive images? And they assess themselves on that because whether the ball bounces over the net or under the net or bounces off a tree into a hole or whatever, depending on the sport you're playing, are things they can't influence. And they try and influence what they can and that's how they assess themselves. And if we took that analogy over to defence and major projects, we would be looking about, have we taken sensible risks? Have we managed them appropriately? Was the risk worth the reward? Versus, did I take a ridiculous risk and pull the rabbit out of the hat? Too often when we, you know, we don't do the right things and then we t pull the rabbit out of the hat, we reward ourselves, medals all around, but we don't necessarily realise that we took the wrong path. So to, I would contend that it's okay to fail. The culture of encouraging people to innovate, to fail and pick themselves up, and more importantly, identify the off-ramps when you can realise that this is going sideways, move away from it or correct it and move on, is actually the culture that will set a condition for transformation of our innovation. So how does Air Force do? So, you know, Afstrat, Air Force strategy, you know, gives, is an attempt for us to give our people permission to innovate. It, it refers to, you know, requiring effective management and exploitation of ideas um, and gives people that permission to innovate. We have assured funding through some areas where we can identify gaps, we can fill holes, we can use integrated investment portfolio or project or acquisition funding to get after innovation, to go after the things that matter versus the things that are shiny and attractive. But sometimes that comes along too late in the program to really make a difference. But perhaps the greatest benefit we have in Air Force in innovation is Jericho. Jericho is a, uh, a program of innovation and transformation established uh, back in 2014, is there Marshall Brown here? Nope. By the then Chief of the Air Force. And the greatest thing that Jericho does is it gives people permission to innovate. People who are going to try new things and get after new things, can. I'm going to go and do some Jericho stuff. I'm going to Jericho it up and do some innovating. It also provides some funding, so they can have the funding for there. And ideally, it would be changing our culture such that those people that are going and Jerichoing it would have the consent of the commanders to go there and fail. The interesting thing here, however, is that Jericho is not part of the capability life cycle. Jericho is an Air Force initiative where we attempt to encourage and foster innovation across our, our capabilities. So it's not necessarily being driven by the capability life cycle. In fact, it's not. It's actually Air Force's attempt to work in parallel to it. Because it's critical that we, uh, we develop that within our folk. Where do we apply it? There's a, n a number of areas along the life cycle that we get after it. Um, working. So the new concepts and ideas in the requirement space. Right? So when we're getting after it, we have the ability to you know, get people in Jericho, you've seen some of the stuff out there where people are, you know, dreaming ideas that we can then roll into our concept development and building it up. Yeah. We can use it as risk reduction. Uh, part of it is about wrapping too, right? So one person's tinkering is another person's risk reduction. So things that are interesting experiments uh, to some are actually critical to devising requirements and, uh, and setting the pathway of how we're going to innovate and how we're going to adapt on the future path. Acquisition, uh, that's probably where we struggle a bit because we get locked into uh, a path 
that is uh, aligned with uh, an approval and a budget. And, and potentially, you know, that's where we lose our ability to wriggle around and, and get that innovation going. And this is where the real ground up stuff really applies uh, at the Air Force Cutting Edge, is those folk out of the squadrons in, in units making adaptations, thinking of good ideas, bringing it to the fore, you know, bring it to their CO, commanders, empowering them, authorising them and, and cracking on. That's where we try and emphasise Jericho in our way of kind of furthering adaptation and improvisation. Um, and you can see there's a gap there, right? And there's a gap that we would typically or often gets described in the valley of death where we sometimes have problems bringing those capabilities that are great ideas and bringing them all the way through to, uh, to capabilities that execute. Uh, and, that, and that is a challenge for us of how we manage and grip that up. So this is the kind of things we can do now. Uh, you know, that is uh, you know, an algorithm where we're looking at uh, algorithmic assurance, right? So in those concepts thing, you know, we can figure out where we can design algorithms to give us a higher reliability to get at certification. So we can talk about where we're going to operate, how we're going to, what concepts we're going to employ as we get further moving forward. Uh, some other things we've got there, um, the electronic boost vehicle, you know, an alternate method of delivering uh, things uh, using uh, incontested environments, or expendable ISR, you know, EO sensors that are projected into an area provide their information update and then are disposed of or you know, not attempted to be recovered. In service, we've got you know, deployable air traffic system, a, a human portable uh, system that our, our folk have developed to go around and give uh, traffic awareness in disaster relief airfields or similar. And uh, air mobility optimization is a program whereby we're just trying to get every spare drop out of airlift support through uh, synthetic and, and delivery and decision making tools. You notice there, there's a gap, right? And that is, that, that's the part where we are still working at and, uh, and need to keep our focus on. So innovation in the service. So the, really the criticality for us is trying to bridge the valley of death of developing that great idea into a capability that we can field and employ in the operational force. A and it's a challenge. Um, getting agreed capability off ramps where it doesn't come to fruition is a challenge. As he's developing all the other thick, you know, fundamental inputs to capability to build that idea into a capability. Workforce, facilities, systems, etc. Because we have the innovation tools to get the idea off the ground, but keeping it airborne is, is our challenge in terms of that. Um, we do have alternate acquisition pathways, um, but they're limited in authority in terms of funds and scope that we can get after. Um, part of that is due to the, uh, the authorities that lie down and part of that is due to the behaviours in terms of what we practically execute as authorities out there. But we can achieve innovation and we can make things happen and that slide there you're seeing is special because there actually is a bunch of innovation in that that we didn't necessarily go after with a Jericho structured program or whatever. You know, when we deployed the E7 to the Middle East, there was a bunch of innovation to get capabilities like Merck Chat and whatnot on it that didn't go through a funding thing. And that's a photo from uh, Pacific Endeavour from a couple of years ago, which again came through a, a, an adaptation of what we were after between Navy and Air Force getting together and make it happen. So I contend that at the working level and the coalface and the squadron le at the squadron level, we're actually progressing, but uh, our ability to impact the acquisition timeline is a challenge. Not all good news, it's just the news. I'll take questions after Michael. Thank you. <laughs>